As the Cretaceous drew to its close, the world began to resemble the one we know. But India, which was not yet joined to the Asian continent, underwent a massive volcanic episode like the one in Siberia that ended the Permian. The Deccan traps bear witness to eruptions that occurred over several millennia. They date from some 65 million years ago, around the time that the dinosaurs disappeared. Until the 1980s, many scientists attributed the dinosaurs' extinction to this volcanic outburst. Then came a theory that was out of this world, literally that the dinosaur killer was an extraterrestrial. In 1980, this crazy idea was proposed that an asteroid hit the planet and caused the extinction that wiped out the dinosaurs. And we all thought, that's nuts. It's like National Enquirer science. Little green men come take our dinosaurs. Asteroid strikes, give me a break. So everybody laughed, thought this is a joke. A joke that scientists would be forced to take seriously. In the badlands of Western Canada, paleontologist Francois Gerien from the Royal Tyrrell Museum makes his way down through millions of years of fossil rich sediments. This valley, carved out by the Red Deer River, has yielded thousands of dinosaur skeletons. And one layer of sediment bears the reddish signature of a dinosaur killer. So we can see here this salmon-colored rock here. This line marks the end of the age of the dinosaurs and the beginning of the age of mammals. For geologists and paleontologists, this line here represents a record of a catastrophic event, a meteorite impact that occurred 66 million years ago. At the base of the layer, we have the last pollens of the last plants that grew at the end of the Cretaceous, followed by iridium, which is an element extremely rare at the surface of the Earth, but extremely abundant in meteorites. This line here marks the extinction of the dinosaurs. And still, at the end of the 20th century, not all researchers accepted the theory of an extraterrestrial impact. It would have left a massive scar somewhere on Earth. So where was the crater? Scientists began looking for it, analyzing and dating each major crater they could find, but none coincided with the extinction of the dinosaurs. In the end, it was two geologists from an oil company who discovered it by chance. Nestled in Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula, half hidden by the waters off the coast, lay a crater more than 100 miles across. It was 66 million years old. And the horrors of the most famous extinction of all could no longer be denied. So if you were on planet Earth 66.02 million years ago, walking around in a beautiful forest, Triceratops is grazing next to you. You're worried you might run into a Tyrannosaurus rex, but you don't see one right now, life is good. Trees are flowering. Suddenly, in an instant, a blinding light and you're dead. Asteroid impact was an amazing thing because unlike all the other extinctions that preceded it, this one was global and instant. It took a second or two for the asteroid to pass through the atmosphere on the way in. The 
The asteroid, of course, is gone. It's vaporized. It's now molten rock, shattered target rock. All that stuff blows back out through the hole in the atmosphere into low Earth orbit. And the Earth ro rotates underneath it. And then all that debris starts to rain back into the atmosphere as it rains back in and heats up. And the sky gets hot. The heat from the sky makes it to the ground and starts fires. So no matter where you are on Earth, within hours, you are feeling some serious hurt. If you're anywhere in North America, forget about it. The initial explosion takes care of you. There's smoke, there's dust, blocks out the sunlight. If you're a plant, there's no photosynthesis. If you are a big animal, if you survive the initial blast somewhere on Earth, there's probably nothing to eat. You probably don't make it through the first winter. magnitude 13 earthquake, the gigantic tsunami, the raining blocks of rock that are flown for hundreds of miles. And the oceans have taken a great insult as well. The chemistry of the oceans have changed. The phytoplankton were turned off for months. The zooplankton have then crashed. The, tr the marine food system is down. In total, Three quarters of species vanished forever. All the big dinosaurs were wiped off the map. But while the Titans died, the stage was set for some tiny survivors to take over the world. The Royal Tyrell Museum is home to one of the world's largest dinosaur collections, including a specimen of the most terrifying of all, Tyrannosaurus rex. But here, scientists are also resurrecting the little animals that would inherit the Earth. Craig Scott, head of conservation and research, studies the mammals of the Paleocene, the time just after the fifth extinction. I'm essentially a paleodentist because the vast majority of, of specimens that I examine are, are teeth. The fossil record of mammals is largely a dental record. You do get the occasional uh, jaws, and sometimes you get some postcranial remains as well. But uh, for mammals of this age and older, uh, the record is primarily dental. Well, from looking at these teeth, I can tell from the shapes of the cusps that this animal was probably uh, eating some resistant foods, maybe really hard insects, or it might have even been crushing mollusks, so the shells of, of snails and, and clams. Um, and I can also tell by looking at the teeth that they have a, a very good resemblance to uh, living relatives of hedgehogs and shrews. Those mammals that survived the fifth mass extinction were no larger than a rat. But the fossils that Craig Scott is analyzing illustrates the speed with which they evolved, diversified, and became giants exploiting the ecological niches once monopolized by the dinosaurs. So this is the skull of an animal called a pantodont. And pantodonts were large, uh, almost hippopotamus-like herbivores that lived during the Paleocene and the Eocene. They represent the group of mammals that achieved the largest body size during the Paleocene. And some of these animals made it up to the size of a very large cow. So within 15 million years or 20 million years after the extinction event, mammals went from animals that had an average body size of maybe a small rabbit up to something that's similar to living hippopotamuses. So that's quite, quite a leap. 
And a mere 10 million or so years after that, mammals got even larger and they achieved body sizes equivalent to living elephants and rhinoceroses. 